All right, guys, we are on location at a rooftop unit that I'm doing some work for, and I wanted to take a minute to do a little experiment, a little experiment sort of highlighting ghost voltage. Now, I don't have high voltage set up in my, my garage, so I can't do these sorts of experiments at home, so instead I do them in the field when I get the opportunity. Now, in that last video, what's the deal with electricity? I had a very unknown issue, and thanks to all the comments from all you guys, all you geniuses out there that uh, gave me all the information to help me better understand what I was dealing with, I have come up with a, a couple different conclusions of what was probably happening there. One of them being which was ghost voltage, and uh, another one was, as, as best as I can understand it, is sort of carbon tracking from, say, a bad breaker or a bad switch, bad contactor that isn't fully closed, possibly closed partially or closed almost to the point where it's making proper contact to give me proper voltage but instead we just have barely any contact and a little bit of voltage leaking by and couple that in with my meter that I have here which is a high impedance meter which I still don't fully understand but from what you guys have taught me the high impedance meter is basically designed for I guess sensitive components boards things that use a lot of low voltage um, and a low impedance meter which I guess uh, some of you guys call an old-school analog meter is a meter that uh, really just puts a load on the circuit to determine if it's actual voltage or not now after this video I'm gonna put a couple uh, screenshots of all the comments that you guys gave me because you guys explain it much much better than I ever could so I'm gonna attach those and I'll slow it down so you guys have actual time to read through that if you'd like but for now I'm gonna highlight ghost voltage so if you'll notice right over there I have my disconnect off and you'll notice I have some some wire wrapped around our incoming power now the way ghost voltage works is you'll have high voltage wire, high voltage power lines going into your unit and you'll have say you know, thermostat wire right here, just thermostat wire, just any sort of wire running very very close to it and that wire if it's you know, small enough or close enough it will sort of, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it properly, but it'll induce a current um, and it's basically doing the same thing as, say, a transformer would do. On your primary side, you'll have your high voltage coming in one side, and you'll have a very, very large winding. And in that very, very large winding, um, you'll have usually like a steel core. And then on the other side of that steel core, actually, let's go right over here, explain this a little bit better. So on our transformer right here, on one side, right over here, no, no, to this side, this side, will be our primary high voltage side and so we have just I don't know how many turns we'll say a thousand turns of of wiring and then we have our steel core right here and on the other side of our steel core we'll have our low voltage side which would be not as many turns of wiring for a step down transformer in this case it's 208 230 down to 24 volts so I'm not going to get in the theory of transformers and how they work right now because there's lots of other videos and better explanations than I could offer you. But basically, you have a thousand turns of wiring on this side, and we'll say we'll have 10 turns of wiring on this side. And as this side is energized, there's a magnetic field that rotates around this wiring, and that magnetic field will expand, and it will expand over into the 10 turns of wiring on this side. And that magnetic field, once it hits the 10 turns of wiring on this side, it'll induce a small current, which would be 24 volts. And Again, forgive me, I could be wrong because it might not be a thousand or ten turns. I'm just throwing numbers out there to better explain this little experiment. So, now coming back over here, we have sort of a similar setup. We have our, our high voltage wiring, which we'll say is our thousand turns of wiring. And then we have our low voltage wiring, this red wiring right here, we'll say is our ten turns of wiring from our previous example. So I'm going to turn the disconnect on. Actually, let me show you something real quick. You look at our meter there we're on volts AC go right here to this side I can get it in there and we are just going to go to our ground wire over here and you'll notice I don't have any white any voltage there's no voltage 
on that red wire. Okay, now our three phase power is on. Now if you notice, I have 1.5 volts. That's not a lot of voltage, but it is voltage. And that voltage is there simply because as that current is going through the wiring, as best as I understand it, as that current is going through the wiring, the magnetic field surrounding that current or that voltage is is expanding into the wiring around that's wrapped that I wrapped around it. And that's where we're getting this sort of ghost voltage. And that is the exact reason why you don't want to run thermostat wire next to high voltage power, which I'm sure a majority of you guys already knew that. Because a majority of you guys explained it to me. So 1.5 volts. Now let's go over to our little comparative. This is the same exact length of wire that I have wrapped around the high voltage wire. Just to show you that I'm not dealing with anything crazy, I'm going to just take a quick measurement of that to ground. I don't have any voltage. No voltage on this just wrapped up wiring, so that's sort of my constant in this experiment. And let's just recheck this again. To ground, 1.5 volts. Let me hit my disconnect. And our voltage is gone. Let me turn this back on. There we got voltage again. Now keep in mind, this wire is not connected to any voltage in any way. It's simply wrapped around higher than normal voltage. Or I guess in this case it is normal voltage, but it's just wrapped around a high voltage wire. But that concludes our little experiment, guys. Here is the document that I created compiling all of the best comments or the comments that I felt best describe what we have going on with this ghost voltage situation. Starting off with Isho E here. Let's see what he has to say. So let's move down to the Phantom and see what he has to say here. Now I think the Phantom here has sort of hit the, the nail on the head with the, the line. What could have happened here is a wire burned and left only a little bit of carbonized material that connected the wires. I think that there's either a motor starter contactor inside this building that controls that exhaust fan or the breaker has possibly failed. The terminals inside the breaker may have partially burned off and we're getting sort of carbon tracking or we're getting that carbon buildup that'll allow a little bit of voltage to leak by, but not enough to actually do any work. So let's move on to uh, John McMaster here. He sent me a link to a Fluke article about high impedance and low impedance meters and why that matters. I'll copy that link and put it in the description below. The article is somewhat long and I don't want to post it in this uh, 
in this format because it would be a little bit harder to read. Let's check out AC Tech. Now what AC Tech is saying here, in my opinion, is ghost voltage um, along the same lines as what our first comment by Esho E was saying. And uh, I, like I said, I sort of highlight this in this little experiment at the end of the video. So let's move down to what Ed Berta has to say. And again, a very good explanation of what we could have going on here. I believe this is along the same lines as ghost voltage as well. When you have uh, wires going next to high voltage wires and you're getting a little bit of ghost voltage on the secondary set of wires that may or may not be plugged into anything, connected to anything, or turned on whatsoever. So let's go down to Robert. And Robert does have a very good explanation of what's going on here as well. And that link that he's talking about, I will post in the description below. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed all those comments. I hope you better understand uh, the situation that we had there that day with the 121 volts of ghost voltage. If not, if you have any further questions, feel free to email me. My email will be in the uh, description below. Um, Post a comment if you have any questions, further ideas, opinions, any of that stuff. Feel free. I welcome feedback. I welcome criticism, opinions, ideas, all that stuff. So I hope you got a kick out of the videos, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for me, and I will see you on the next one, all right?